It's good to be back in your church and I'm grateful to Father Frank for inviting me to celebrate Mass with you this morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you and also with you. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honour of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus was taken up into heaven, the apostles went back from the Mount of Olives, as it is called, to Jerusalem, a short distance away, no more than a Sabbath walk. And when they reached the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. There was Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Jude, son of James. All these joined in continuous prayer together with several women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. O Lord, hear my voice when I call, have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. If you can have some share in the sufferings of Christ, be glad, because you will enjoy a much greater gladness when his glory is revealed. It is a blessing for you when they insult you for bearing the name of Christ, because it means that you have the spirit of glory, the spirit of God resting on you. 
none of you should ever deserve to suffer for being a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or an informer. But if any one of you should suffer for being a Christian, then he is not to be ashamed of it. He should thank God that he has been called one. The Word of the Lord. Let us prepare for the gospel by saying the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you, and your hearts will be full of joy. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. And through the power over all mankind that you have given him, let him give eternal life to those you have entrusted to him. And eternal life is this, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth and finished the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, it is time for you to glorify me with that glory I had with you before ever the world was. I have made your name known to the men you took from the world to give me. They were yours and you gave them to me. And now they have kept your word and at last they know that all that you have given me comes indeed from you, for I have given them the teaching you gave to me. And they have truly accepted this, that I came from you, and have believed that it was you who sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and in them I am glorified. I am not in the world any longer, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Mass which we are celebrating together this morning, as with every Mass, is made up of two parts, the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. In the first, the Liturgy of the Word, God speaks to us, and in the second, the Liturgy of the Eucharist, God feeds us with the Body and Blood of our risen Lord. And I want just to say a few words about the first, the liturgy of the word. When we celebrate Mass together, we all hear the same readings from Scripture, we hear the same stories, but clearly we hear them differently. A six-year-old member of the parish, and God speaks to children, will hear the story very differently from mum and dad, or grandparents, or old priests for that matter, single people, all our conditions are different. But God speaks to each one of us personally, saying to each of us what we need to hear at this stage in our lives. All we have to do is to listen carefully, with an open ear, an open mind, and an open heart. So although it's true up to a point that somebody preaches a homily, it is perhaps even more true that everyone writes their own homily, or rather the Holy Spirit of God writes a homily on our hearts. And the preachers simply reveal what they've heard themselves, or perhaps add a few words of explanation as a result of their studies. So what did I hear this morning in the Holy Word of God? Well, I was struck in that first reading by the thought of the apostles, the mother of Jesus, several women and brothers, 
joined in continuous prayer, all in lockdown in the upper room after the ascension of Jesus into heaven. And I couldn't help wondering if Our Lady had to do all the cooking. I hope not. I was struck and challenged by the words in the second reading, if you can have some share in the sufferings of Christ, be glad. And then I was cheered by these words, I will not leave you orphans, I will come back to you and your hearts will be full of joy. And then in the Gospel, we hear Jesus speaking to his Father, our Father too. It's a very intimate moment, I think, that we should simply hear in silence. In that beautiful prayer, just before the passion and death of Jesus, Jesus goes on to say, The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I've often wondered what this glory means. What, what is glory? And I think it means, in the words of Jesus, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which we receive in baptism, a gift we shall celebrate next Sunday at Pentecost. So perhaps during this coming week, we might ask the Holy Spirit to open our minds, our hearts, our ears, to receive and welcome the precious gift of God's Holy Word. Whatever God has said to each of us this morning is a very precious gift to be treasured, to be remembered, and is much more important than anything the preacher may have said. The Lord is our light and our help. Dear Father, please hear our voices when we call on you. Have mercy on us and answer our prayers. With Jesus' disciples, we await the coming of the Spirit. We pray that he will come to heal, strengthen and guide all of us in these troubled times. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who are sharing in the sufferings of Christ, particularly for those Christians made to suffer for their faith in him all over the world. Lord, hear us. Jesus said, eternal life is this, to know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Keep us all firm in our faith, when our friends and loved ones have died. Lord, hear us. We pray that we may still support those aid agencies like CAFOB, who are continuing to provide for those who are hungry and thirsty in very difficult circumstances. Lord, hear us. We pray for all frontline workers in whatever capacity they risk themselves on our behalf, that you will protect them and keep them strong and safe. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have died, and especially today, for three members of our Earl Shilton community. Mr. Derek Telford, 
Mrs. Nancy Kieran and Mr. Eric West, who died in the last week. Grant them light and life with you, and please comfort their families. Lord, hear us. We ask our Mother Mary to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In a moment of silence, we place ourselves and our intentions before you, our loving God. Loving Father, fill us all with your presence in Jesus, your Son. May we think with the mind of Christ, see with the eyes of Christ, speak with the words of Christ, serve with the hands of Christ, love with the heart of Christ, and live with the life of Christ, who is Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his children. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotion we may pass over to the glory of, of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us share us in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis our Pope, Patrick our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all who have died into the light of your presence. mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, Saint Dominic and all your saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Father, I pray that they may be one, as we also are one. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hear us, O God our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Usually on Sunday, Pope Francis greets the people with the words, Wana Domenica which he means, I think, I hope you celebrated Mass well, have a good lunch, and enjoy Sunday. So in the words of Pope Francis, one of the